For our mountain landscape, we wanted to install a cable car. The choice was a Titlis cable car from Brava. This video shows the construction and the review of the kit. Just follow the chapters in the video if you're only interested in the review. The lift comes as a kit and the instructions manual should be followed carefully when assembling. It is important to keep the distance and the height difference between the top and bottom station within specification. There should be two people for the assembly. The first step is to assemble the mast. Then these two stations are placed approximately. The respective plate should be stable so that it doesn't move later when tensioning. Then pull a string so that the stations are really parallel to each other. Then place the mast a little higher than the center of the lift. The mast doesn't have to be straight. In reality it stands at a slight angle, which we also did. It should have some leeway for the final construction. The station and the mast are provisionally screwed on and their position is drawn on the board. Then the boarding are lighting areas as well as the front wall are mounted on the upper and lower station. In contrast to the usual procedure, the kits are finished on the layout. This is necessary so you can access the mechanism at any time. One places both stations on the marked position and screws them slightly with one screw each. Now pull both suspension ropes. Start at the bottom station and tie it there. Then one pulls it to the top station and loops around there and back to the bottom station where the tensioning device is. The waltzing is not easy and needs quite a lot of patience and steady hands. If it doesn't work, let someone else try. The waltzing has to be repeated again on the other side. When both suspension ropes have been tensioned, turn both stations slightly until they are exactly parallel. Now post the mast in place. It must be parallel to the suspension ropes and in no way twisted. Now adjust the rope guide device in the station. Then screw the station and the mast with several screws. Finally shorten the remain of the suspension ropes. The next step is to connect the holding rope to the gondolas. To do this, loosen one screw and lead the holding rope upwards in one gondola and downwards on the other. You have to tighten the screw really tight. Then pull it through the two stations. At the top station, the holding rope is led once around the winch. Now position one gondola at the top station and the other at the bottom station and attach the holding rod to the gondolas. The holding rod is tensioned by springs. Trim the holding rope. For testing connect 16 volt AC. The gondolas now move back and forth and pause at the stations. You can adjust the speed with a potentiometer on the steering electronics. In order for the gondola to light up, you have to connect the cable from the bottom station to the corresponding cable from the top station. On our layout, the distance was very big, so we had to extend it. In our case, we mounted the gondola 1 and 2 on the wrong position, so we had to change polarity on the connector feeding to the LEDs. When everything goes perfectly, mount the walls together. It should be noted that the numbers on the spruces don't match with the instructions. 
This is not a mistake, as Brava wrote me in an email. We say this is laziness and it would make life much easier. Then mount the walls in the station. It is important not to glue anything together. Everything is just plugged in. As a bonus, we later also mounted LED so that the station light up at night. So, and now to the review. The model looks very good on the layout and attracts a lot of attention. That's all there is to it which is positive. Unfortunately, it's extremely loud during operation. You cannot adjust the pose between each run so the noise quickly drives ones crazy. The control electronics really belong in the Stone Age. Who built the control system with relays, transistors and resistors in 2019? The person in charge should be fired on the spot, he is completely incompetent. Probably something like, we always done it this way. I have 20 years of experience in the electronics development, so I know what I'm talking about. The whole thing could be controlled much more flexibly by a microcontroller we we'll probably have to implement our own via Arduino. For something that costs over 350 euro, you shouldn't have to do that yourself. If you haven't done it, please subscribe to our channel and like this video.